大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 Everyone who knows me knows I drink coffee more than I do water. It's a delicious, delicious curse. My mix of choice, the latte. Yes, it's girly. No, I don't care. But this video isn't about me. It's about another man drinking coffee. Huawei CEO Ren Zhengfei. You probably already heard he recently held a conference in Shenzhen to discuss Huawei with two professional tech nerds. George Gilder and Nicholas Negroponte, and yes, one nerd is allowed to call other nerds nerds. Huawei's been taking a lot of heat recently, and it's definitely a focal point for the whole world. That's a lot of pressure. I've known quite a few CEOs over the years, and they all share one trait: they keep cool under pressure. To let off some steam, Mr. Ren had an organized discussion and Q&A session. As a change of format, a coffee with Mr. Ren was hosted in Shenzhen at the world headquarters for Huawei. The talk was moderated by CGTN's Tian Wei and mostly revolved around the future of technology. There were also points about Huawei's position in the global market, the trade war, and how the world sees Huawei. As you can probably guess, each speaker mostly spoke about their respective areas of expertise or interest. I'd seen TED talks by Nicholas Negroponte, and of course I knew about the OLPC project. George Gilder is further from my circles; he's been focused more on economic forces in the past. And then, of course, there was Mr. Ren, founder and CEO of Huawei. Mr. Gilder focused on blockchain and cryptography, which he's clearly interested in. He views the economic system as broken and the internet itself as broken. He wants Huawei to lead the way in advancing towards fixing those issues, which I thought was a rather ambitious set of goals to set on Huawei. Honestly, Mr. Negroponte at one point said, "Quote: Trump has already said publicly that he would reconsider Huawei if we can make a trade deal. So clearly, it's not about national security. We don't trade national security. You know that sounds almost exactly like what a young, handsome guy I knew once pointed out." Oh yeah, here it is. Trump has already talked about using this as a trade negotiation. Just think about that. If it were really a security concern, why would he be willing to drop it for money? So obviously, I agree with him on that one. He also acted a little bit of a buffer for Mr. Gilder, who was quite intense in his sections. He spoke about China's position in the world and what he viewed to be missteps from Trump. They all talked about network security, which I thought was interesting. You see, every good IT person knows one of the most difficult things to do is explain problems and solutions to non-technical people. It's a loophole that news companies exploit to trick the public quite frequently. I read articles all the time that say things that sound technical but mean nothing, or they are technical and sound correct but are completely stupid. They know they can basically just say a bunch of tech-sounding mumbo jumbo, and most people will assume it's all well researched. Believe me, that's rarely the case. So I paid very close attention to everything the gentleman said in the discussion. I tried to sniff out any technical dishonesty, but they actually did well in this sense. One of the most interesting points made was from Mr. Den about how there are no back doors on Huawei's equipment. Well, that part wasn't surprising, but the next part really got me. He said Huawei was willing to sign non-backdoor agreements with countries right now, but then he wondered why is no one else ready? Just let that sink into your brain for a minute. He's basically saying we're ready to sign a non-backdoor agreement right now. Where is everybody? Yeah, good question. Why would I don't know America be unwilling to sign an agreement to not have backdoors in their networks? He also said Huawei will plan for something like a 30 billion dollar loss over the next year from the persecution going on, but also expects the numbers to return to growth. He said even he was surprised by how far the U.S. went in its plight against Huawei. After the talk, the guests were asked for questions. First up, Brad Pitt. No, 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 wait. Is that Tom Hardy? 47? Now I just want to take a moment to emphasize here: the particular camera CGTN was using put on a lot of extra pounds. Okay. I don't really look like that. I'm super skinny. No, 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 buff. This is my real body. After some more questions, a few news agencies got their chance. There were three major outlets that asked questions. I thought it was interesting that literally every single question they asked was negative. They asked about censorship, profit loss, and other things like that. Nothing about technology futures. 
nothing academic. They didn't ask anything to Gilder or Negroponte. They didn't care at all that they were at this event. The only thing they wanted was to find some blood so they could get a scoop. I could already see the problem with journalism. After the event, the guests and Mr. Den headed over to another building for a direct Q&A session. I told my girlfriend how the first part went and I predicted, I bet when the news reports this thing, the only thing they will talk about will be profit forecast and negative things. And look, what do you know? You see, this is the difference. This is the problem. Sure, the event had many purposes and one of those was probably to get that information out. But why did no one in the news mention the backdoor agreement? Think about that. This is news. It is internationally relevant and extremely consequential. What does it mean to have countries refuse to participate in an agreement not to use backdoors? Well, they use security as a justification to ban companies from trade. What does that mean for the world? When we know Cisco has backdoor after backdoor after backdoor exposed. This is news, people. But, of course, when I looked at the reporting, it was all about some financial numbers affecting one company, Huawei. It was all about offering blood up to the anti-Chinese market out there, cheering for the damage they've done. Forget real news. Do you see that? During the direct Q&A, I got a chance to observe Mr. Zhen more closely. Without Gilder and Negroponte, he had to stand on his own. He was literally surrounded on all sides with interested people, myself included. We politely fired question after question at him and awaited his answers. So what's he like? Well, we didn't go out drinking together and hit the KTVs or anything. I just participated in an activity with him, but I'll tell you my impressions. His answers definitely weren't rehearsed. We were asking him all kinds of random questions and he always had a reply. His answers were definitely corporate. They kind of reminded me of those from Bill Gates, very large scope, considerate of global issues and contemporary politics, yet somehow not as bland and boring as all that sounds. He came off as having a strong sense of humor and an even stronger poetic streak. Now, I'm not making that up. Somehow this guy can infuse long technical or economic answers with poetic rhythm and themes. And there were several moments when the whole group, myself included, busted out laughing at his jokes. It was interesting for me to compare his thought processes to other CEOs that I've known. Some similarities and some differences, but overall it was a fascinating experience. To be honest with you, I kept thinking about the massive amount of pressure he must have on him. And yet he seemed right at home in this world of constant press, constant bias reporting, constant interest, all in the public eye. Wow. So as much as I hate to admit it, I am now guilty of having worn a suit in the heat of Shenzhen. Only I was doing it to go to a special event at Huawei's huge sprawling campus. A week or so before, I had taken a tour of the campus, which is actually enormous, like I said. Like the size of a town. Over the years, I've toured many facilities, but I'd say Huawei's was probably the biggest. They must have hundreds of landscapers, I thought. They told me about another campus made up to be of various European styles, but I didn't go. All in all, I'd say I was impressed by the friendliness and professionalism expressed by Huawei to the group and I appreciated the invitation. Thanks everybody. See ya.